Um, but I want to give you a quick sort of a very quick tour of some of the highlights of the subject, uh, sort of equivalent to you know visiting Paris and only seeing the Eiffel Tower and the Arc de Triomphe. You know, not exactly seeing all of Paris, but you know you can get just a, a glimpse of, uh, of of this of the subject, which, which I think is very beautiful um, and surprisingly deep. It starts off very ele elementary, but becomes quite deep. Okay, so uh, to begin this this talk, let's let's just begin with the basics. Just what is a prime number? So uh, just to remind you. A prime number is any natural number which is bigger than one, uh, which cannot be factored into two smaller numbers. And, oh, and um, over here, I have just listed the first few, I think the first thousand prime numbers, two, three, five, seven, and so forth. These are all, all the first few prime numbers. They go on and on and on. Uh, we found some quite big ones. This is the biggest prime number that we've actually found. Um, and they, it goes on from that too. OK, so th these are the prime numbers. Um, so as I said, they've been studied um, all the way to, um, back to the ancient Greeks, um, and particularly by Euclid. Uh, and they proved uh, two major results, two fundamental results about the, uh, the primes. Uh, and I just want to remind you of them here. So the, uh, the two most fundamental results about the primes are firstly the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, proven by Euclid in about 300 BC. And uh, it says that every natural number bigger than one can be expressed in only exactly one way as the product of primes. So for example, the number 20 is 2 times 2 times 5. Now, and other than by rearranging, like 2 times 5 times 2, other than by rearranging, there's only one way to do this. There's exactly one factorization into primes for every natural number. This is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. And the other great theorem they proved is Euclid's theorem, also proved by Euclid uh, about the same time, which is that uh, the primes go on forever. There are infinitely many prime numbers. So this, these are the, the two most fundamental theorems in, in uh, um, in the subject. Um, so the fundamental theorem, if you like, um, just to give, a, it's appropriate to give a chemical analogy uh, for this talk, uh, it, it's, um, it's like saying that the prime numbers are in some sense the atomic elements of the integers. Uh, so you can think, so just like every molecule is made up of atoms, uh, every integer is made up of primes. Um, so over here, for example, I've, 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 I have list, I've listed a couple of, of numbers of integers and their, and their decompositions into primes. Um, by the way, this is the fundamental theorem is, is the reason why we don't consider one to be a prime number. You think one has no factors other than one, so what, why don't we call it prime? Well, if we call it prime, then there'll be more than one way to factor a number to primes. You know, like the number four could be two times two, or two times two times one, or two times two times one times one. But um, we want a unique factorization, and so for that reason, we do not consider one to be a prime number. Okay, so that's the fundamental theorem. Um, Euclid's theorem, um, so I'll actually come and give you the proof of this theorem. This is the only complete proof I'll give in this talk uh, because it's so beautiful, I think. It's, it's, the, um, it's a classic proof, um, and it's a classic example of a style of proof called reductio ad absurdum, proof by contradiction. So you would think if you want to prove this infinite many primes, what you should do is maybe create some formula that, that lists, that creates infinite many primes. But in fact, uh, even today, uh, even, even uh, after 2,000 years, we do not really have a good formula that actually just generates primes directly. Um, so instead, the way we prove things about prime numbers is that we argue more indirectly. And this is a classic example. We prove by contradiction. So to prove there's infinitely many primes, we prove that there, there can't be finitely many primes. And hence, and there must be infinitely many. So I'll just review for you the proof. I mean, it's, it's very classical, but it, um, it's, it's, it's really worth uh, going through. So suppose that Euclid was wrong. Suppose that there were only finitely many primes. Uh, and let's call them P1, P2, or Pn. So uh, just for sake of example, uh, suppose, for instance, that the only primes in the world were 2, 3, and 5. OK, just for sake of example, suppose there were no other primes. Um, then what you do is that you take all the primes in the world, and you multiply them together. And because there's only finite many primes, that's a finite number. And then you add 1. So you make a new number, which I'll call capital P. That's P1 times P2 times up to Pn plus 1. So for instance, if 2, 3, and 5 are the only primes in the world, multiply them together, you get 30. And then add 1, you get 31. So we've made a new number, uh, and this number is uh, bigger than 1, clearly, uh, but it's not divisible by P1, not divisible by P2, or by, or by any of the primes in the world, because when you divide by any of those primes, you get a remainder of 1. So you've made a new number, which is not divisible by any prime. But the fundamental theorem of, calcul fundamental theorem of arithmetic tells you that every number can be factored into primes. And so that's a contradiction. So thanks to the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, you cannot do this. Uh, you, you must. Um, um, 
Um, and so there can't be finitely many primes, and hence there must be infinitely many primes. So it's a very short proof. I put it on one, one slide, but it's, it's indirect. Uh, it proves by contradiction. And I just want to share with you a famous quote of G.H. Uh, Hardy, who's a uh, famous uh, British mathematician, who was a famous British mathematician. Um, so the quote is that reductio ad absurdum, proof by contradiction, which Euclid loved so much, is one of a mathematician's finest weapons. It is a far finer gambit than any chess gambit. So a chess player may offer the sacrifice of a pawn or even a piece, but a mathematician offers the entire game and still can win the game. So, you know, so that's uh, it, proof by contradiction is very powerful too. It's indirect, it's, uh, but it, uh, it, can, it, can pre it can prove results that you cannot prove, you cannot easily prove by, by direct means. Okay, um, so um, returning back to the fundamental theorem, it's a, it's a beautiful theorem, um, but it is just a theoretical theorem. It tells you that any number out there, so I can, I can give you a 200 digit number, a huge number, give you a huge number. In principle, the fundamental theorem tells you that every huge number, no matter how large, can be factored into primes. But there is, no one knows how to do this um, in any reasonable, um, practical manner. So if I give you a 200 digit number, there is no real way to figure out what primes divide it. You know, you could start to, you can say just two divide it, three divide it, four divide it. This would take a long, long time. Um, and with a 200 digit number, even with the fastest computers in the world, uh, no one knows how to factor uh, these numbers into primes. Um, and this is actually quite important. It's actually, it's actually very important uh, for us. Um, our economy, in some sense, depends on the fact that no one can factor these large numbers. Um, because uh, there are many, um, because um, there are many modern cryptographic protocols, um, there, there are many um, codes that we actually use. Uh, you may not even know that you're using this, but when you buy something on the internet, you are uh, using a, a, a secure HTTP connection. You are probably using the RSA algorithm without even knowing it. Um, you're using an algorithm which actually uh, relies on prime numbers and the factorization of the primes. It's a somewhat technical algorithm. Um, I'll give a related algorithm later in this talk. Um, but um, the only known way to crack this algorithm is to take a huge number and factor it in, into, into smaller primes. If you, if you can do that, then you can crack the algorithm. But no one knows how to do this, and we believe that, 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 that even, uh, even the bad guys out there do not know how to factor 200 digit prime numbers. Um, and, uh, and so hence, hence these codes seem to, seem to be secure. And, and you know, they, they have been. I mean, I mean there have been you know, uh, security breaches on the internet, but not because of the mathematics, because of, because of other weaknesses, uh, you know, uh, like human error or programming error or something. Okay, so that's the fundamental theorem. Um, now I'll go back to Euclid's theorem. Um, Euclid's theorem, again, tells you in principle that there are infinitely many primes out there. So there must be primes which are more than 200 digits long. There must be primes more than a trillion digits long. But as I said, the proof was indirect. It does not give you a, a recipe to find those primes. It just tells you that they're out there, that, you can't, that there must be infinitely many. There can't be finitely many. But there's no recipe to find them. Uh, people have searched for really big primes. There are special numbers uh, that are easier to test for prime to, for being primed than, than, than general numbers. Um, and the biggest prime which, uh, which has yet been discovered is actually uh, this number here, um, 2 to the 43 million 112,609 minus 1. Uh, that is a huge number. It's, it was over 12 million digits long. And it was proven to be prime uh, just this year, actually a few months ago, um, uh, as part of uh, GIMPs, the Great Internet Mersenne Prime Search uh, Distributed Internet Project. So this is, they enlisted thousands or tens of thousands of computers all across the internet um, to search for these primes. Uh, there's, a, there's an algorithm that can be parallel processed uh, in very effectively by this. Um, in fact, and the, the actual computer that found uh, this particular prime actually was uh, in my home, home university of UCLA, actually. Um, but uh, it was really an internet, uh, internet search. Um, this graphic, by the way, in the background, this is a picture of the internet. Um, I, I just stole this from some website. I'm not exactly sure what, uh, uh, what the colors mean and so forth, but each, each dot is, 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 a, is, a, is a server. Um, and but, uh, it's a, so it's a very pretty picture, at least, uh, of, uh, of the internet. Anyway, so some fraction of this was used to find primes. Uh, 